Right now, Lord, we're waiting on you. Hey, we're waiting on you. 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 Can we sing it one more time as loud as we can? Yes, Lord. Come on, from your spirit, from your spirit. Yes, Lord. Oh. Yes, Lord. Oh. Yes, Lord. Oh. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just raise up your praise right here. Just imagine if we all got on one accord. The Bible says where two or three are gathered, he be in the midst of them. And I can't help but be reminded of the day of Pentecost. The reason that the Holy Spirit fell is because they were all on one accord. So everybody in this moment, let's just get Jesus on our mind. Let's call his name Jesus. 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 Come on. Jesus. Healing. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Whoa, wasn't that wonderful? Didn't you enjoy that praise team? I'm telling you, the presence of the Lord is in this place. I know you're at home, but you had to feel it. Amen. You have the Holy Ghost with you. You felt that. Amen. Thank you so much, praise team, for bringing us those wonderful praises. Now we're going to have a welcome by Sister Nancy Biko. Psalms 122 and 1 says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Good evening to all of the saints gathered here this evening in this sanctuary and to all of you who may be viewing and listening by way of social media on this historic occasion. It is historic because it is the first time in the history of this jurisdiction that services have been conducted by way of social media because of the pandemic that has affected not only the United States but the entire world. On behalf of Mother Myrtle L. Humphrey, Department of Women Supervisor of the Illinois Southeast Jurisdiction, I welcome you this evening to the 63rd Holy Convocation of the Illinois Southeast Jurisdiction, where Bishop Otis A. Eanes Sr. is the jurisdictional prelate. We welcome you to Women's Night, which is the opening service of the convocation. While we may not all be able to be present physically in the sanctuary, we can all celebrate and enjoy this service by way of social media. We recognize that God is not limited to a physical structure, time, nor place, because he is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. He is wherever you are. We serve an awesome God, and we welcome you to join us as we celebrate and give him all praises during this holy convocation. Tonight, we shall be blessed to hear an inspiring message from our own supervisor, Mother Myrtle Humphrey. We invite you to prayerfully listen and enjoy what the Lord has given her to deliver to the people of God. We welcome you who are present in this sanctuary and those who may be viewing in their homes or other places to rejoice and be glad because we know that God is not limited in time, space, or place. Again, we welcome you to the Women's Night of the 63rd Holy Convocation of the Illinois Southeast Jurisdiction. Welcome. Wasn't that a wonderful welcome? Thank you so much for that. 
So I know, you know, this is a little different for us. It really is, and I get it. But I tell you, God is a healer. He is a deliverer. We've heard so much about COVID, the pandemic, and you know what? It kind of makes us wonder, but after this, you are gonna understand God is still God in the midst of this pandemic. And next on program, we have a COVID testimony. Yes, I said COVID testimony from our own missionary, Jackie Osborne. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. He didn't have to wake me this morning, but he did. He didn't have to pity my groaning, but he did. Hallelujah. I got a right to praise God. May the 24th. Hallelujah. I was doing a project, and on that Friday, I did not know that the person that I was doing the project for was sick, amen. But he went home that night. And on that Saturday morning, his wife called me and said we had to rush him to the hospital because he had been uh, told that he was positive with the COVID virus. Well, I'm feeling all right. I didn't have a headache. I didn't have no coughing. I didn't have any of those symptoms. But when she told me that, his mother, his sister, and another sister, we all got together on Sunday and we went to the urgent care. And I'm telling you, you're talking about putting that cotton up in your nose. I don't wish nobody on that. Amen. But I want you to know I went through it. And they told me that I had a temperature, a mild temperature, of 100.4. I wasn't hot. I didn't have no chills. I didn't know anything was going on. But okay, so I went on home. And I thought I was okay, right? And you know, I'm not a sleeper. I tell people that I've gotten used to my house more than I ever have. And I tell you one thing about it. God is a good God. He's a good God, saints. On that Wednesday, they called me. They said, Miss Osborne, you are positive. Okay, I Okay, you say I'm positive, okay. I still ain't feeling nothing, right? But I want you to know, over in the midnight hour, God, I got sick as I don't know what, got short of breath, hallelujah. But how many know that when you are in the arms of Jesus, he is your protector. He is your deliverer. All you got to do is make sure that you're in the arms of Jesus. Well, I went on through the night. Hallelujah. Got up the next morning. Uh -huh, that's when it really began to come on. I got short of breath, sister. I got short of breath, I'm telling you. And my niece said, you look like a ghost. I said, do I look that bad? I know I ain't beautiful. But I said, do I look that bad? She said, yes, you do. Saints, I want you to know that I have lost the taste of food. And everything I put in my mouth looked like it was a lump of sugar. I even got some water, mother, and it tasted just like a lump of sugar. And I thought I loved sweets, but when I felt that one, uh-uh, 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 I don't know, no, 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 no. And I tell you, your appetite leaves you. You don't feel like eating. You want to sleep. You want to do all of those things. And when I got up to walk, I ain't never hugged the wall as much as I have when I had the COVID. But how many know that God will give you strength? He will give you strength to do what you have to do. When I was in the house alone, I hugged the wall, Sister Val, to get around. But God, he just, he comforted me. God, he gave me the strength. God, he could have let me leave here. 
but he didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me give. But oh, oh I thank God. Today I'm standing. I am a testimony that you can have a virus. But if you got Jesus, everybody ain't going to die. Everybody ain't going to die. We are living testimony. I've been through the fire, going through flood, going through heartaches. But God, he is your deliverer. If you stay happy when you should be sad, Jesus, he'll bring you out. Yes. Jesus, he'll take you through. Jesus, if you just call on the name of Jesus, he is your strong top. He is your deliverer. And I just kept on calling on the name of the Lord. People would call me on the telephone. And I'd get so short of breath, I want to tell them, please hang up. But I, you know, you don't want to be mean. Yeah. <laughs> but I thank God. Yeah. Let me tell you. When I lost my taste, I don't have all of them yet. But I thank God what I do have. Because what I do have is what the Lord allowed me to have. Yeah. We got to learn to be thankful in whatever situation that we're in. Whether you're sick, call it. Whether you're in trouble, call him, and he will answer. Give him some praise. uplifted right now. Your hands should be going up and praising God for what he has done for her, but know that he can do that for you. Amen. You can go ahead and talk back to me. I may not be able to hear you, but I tell you, God is still on the throne. Amen. Next, we're going to have a tribute by Lady Kenya Johnson. What an honor and a privilege it is to give a tribute to our dear Mother Humphrey. Mother Humphrey is worthy of double honor for her hard work in teaching and expounding the word of God. So we have two dozen long stem roses for her double honor, according to 1 Timothy 5 and 17. The white rose is symbolic for her Titus two teachings of chastity and purity and for the spiritual reverence that we have for her. Red is for the love that she gives unconditionally. She does not have favorites and loves us all as dear children of the Lord. 
Yellow roses symbolize friendship. She is a friend of the church and has a special love for pastors and leaders. She has a heart to help churches and teach and expand the work of the church. Pink is for her gentleness, dignity, elegance, grace, and sweetness. Her home is always impeccable and full of love, just as a mother's home should be. We have watched our mother experience some of the hardest trials of life. We have watched her go through strong and courageous, a great example of how a mother and woman of God should be. Thank you, Lady Kenya Johnson, for that wonderful tribute. Our mother is well deserving of everything. And as you said earlier, double honor. Again, thank you for that. And next on our program, we have a selection by our dynamic choir, the Illinois Southeast Jurisdictional Choir, under the leadership of Elder D'Angelo Bill. And after you've been graced with selection by our wonderful choir, you will be in the hands of none other than our first assistant supervisor, Elizabeth Wiggins. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
the Lord, everybody. Amen. Didn't we enjoy our jurisdictional choir? I'm going to get it, but you got to open up your mouth and say yes. Bigger, better, because I'm going to get it. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're happy to be here on tonight. Amen. We're blessed to be among the saints of God. Amen. And we are glad to have you watching us by way of Facebook, YouTube, however you're watching us. We're glad to have you on tonight. Amen. We certainly honor our jurisdictional bishop and his cabinet and to our saintly mother on tonight. Amen. Who's going to be bringing the word. Amen. We honor our jurisdictional first lady, Mother Donna Eanes. And to all of you, the people of God, we're happy to be here. And it is my pleasure and honor to introduce our saintly mother to you in video land, Facebook, or wherever you're watching us. Amen. We thank God for our supervisor that has been appointed and anointed to the Illinois Southeast jurisdiction for this time to lead us, the women of God. Let us appreciate her. Amen. Amen. Mother Myrtle Humphrey is a woman of vision. And we, the women in Illinois Southeast jurisdiction, we stand in front of her to help pave the way for her vision. We stand beside her to help lift up her arms in times that she's down. And we stand behind her to push her forward because when she goes forward, we move the department. Amen. Mother Humphrey is theologically learned but spirit led. Amen. She is a woman that can relate to women from age one to 100 and in between. If it's a baby, she knows how to go and lay hands on them and pronounce the blessings of God over their life. And if it's a 100-year-old person, she knows how to hold their hand and help them to reminisce from whence God has brought them. And we appreciate our supervisor on tonight. Amen. And I am honored to serve as her first assistant. I'm privileged to stand in this holy place. Amen. I love my supervisor. We all love our supervisor. And immediately after, our jurisdictional choir comes, the next voice that we will hear will be that of our saintly mother, Mother Myrtle L. Humphrey.
for just a moment. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight, O oh God. We thank you for what our ears have heard. We thank you for already, you've already blessed us. And God, we just want to thank you. We ask you to be with us tonight, O oh God. Open up the hearts and the minds of the people to receive your word. And I want to thank you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless this beautiful choir. Praise God. I want to thank you, Mother Elizabeth Victoria Wigan first assistant supervisor to the Illinois Southeast Department of Women for your gracious introduction. And I honor God tonight who is the giver and sustainer of my life. I thank God for being saved, sanctified, filled with his spirit, and meet for the master's use. We honor our prelate. Dr. Otis Augustus Eanes, Sr. <laughs> to his administrative staff, First Lady Donna Eanes, the lovely First Lady Donna Eanes, and to our entire women's department. We welcome and we acknowledge our brothers and sisters who are joining us by way of social media and to everyone under the sound of my voice. I also would like to send love and greetings to my predecessor, Mother Roxolana Moore. Thank you, Bishop Eames, for affording the Women's Department the opportunity to present in our 63rd annual Holy Convocation. Now this is, a, this is the first night of this celebration and this is indeed a memorial, memorial, uh, a memorial of occasion, praise God, memorable, memorable occasion. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. It's not a memorial, <laughs> but it's a memorable occasion. And we thank God for it. And we invite you, while I just want to reiterate our listening audience, we want to invite you to join us for our licensing and ordination service, which will be highlighted tomorrow at 12 noon. Tomorrow at 12 noon. Also, you absolutely don't want to miss tomorrow night. Oh, no. Our own Bishop Otis Eames will be bringing the word on tomorrow night. Our anointed bishop. And we will be uh, enjoying him and what God has given him to give to us. And then we're going to be honored on Friday night, which is our official night. We thank God for official night. None other than that distinguished, renowned preacher, general board member, Bishop Drew Shear. That said, Lord, send your word. We are blessed. We are blessed, saints, that modern technology allows us 
to connect. And we thank God for our PR and our media staff for making it happen. Yeah. And we are thanking all of you in advance for your support. To our program participants tonight, didn't the Lord bless us tonight? Even though we haven't been through this before with the virtual convocation, but I tell you, the Lord has blessed us tremendously on tonight. For the participants on the service tonight, we have been inspired by your presentations, and we applaud your faithfulness and your commitment to our jurisdiction and the women's department. I thank you for your assistance in this work of faith and labor of love. This is a historic year of treading through uncharted territories due to the global distress of the COVID-19 pandemic. I thank God for my beautiful daughter who have been just such a support to me and who brought me here tonight, <laughs> District Missionary Valerie Light. God bless you. There, uh, a pandemic is an occurrence in which a disease spreads very quickly and affects a large number of people over a whole area or throughout the world. There are numerous inconveniences associated with this pandemic. Some have contacted it and been delivered, and others have transitioned. Jobs have been lost. Schools and business doors are closed. It is no longer business as usual. The norm now is mandated social distancing and wearing masks in public. Even though they got bling or whatever on them, they're still masks. <laughs> Having church via social media is no longer a novelty. At the same time, we are dealing with the usual uncertainties of our chaotic society, illnesses, social unrest, systematic racism, global corruption, high unemployment, tornadoes, raging wildfires, earthquakes, floods, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. These are the facts of life. We are living in trying times. But through it all, life goes on, and God is still on his throne. He has not abandoned the world. He continues to be involved in his creation and the lives of their, of his, of their, of their, in the people's lives, his creation. He, he's involved in your lives. The work of the church must and will go on. Because Jesus said the very gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. There was a man by the name of Ram Emmanuel, a philosopher, he was the former mayor of Chicago. He was also advisor to President Bill Clinton. And he was President Barack Obama's chief of staff. And he expressed this quote during the great financial crisis and recession of 2008. Quote, you never want a serious crisis to go to waste. It provides the opportunity to do things that were not possible to do before. In other words, extraordinary circumstances require extraordinary measures. None of us enjoy the hardships of life. 
And adversity is a state of continual difficulties. So how do we confront these difficult challenges that life brings us? How do we deal with and how do we advance through adversity? The answer is hope. Hope is an extension of our faith, our anchor of safety. Our thought tonight is Operation Hope. is a desire accompanied by expectation of our belief in fulfillment. To be hopeless is to have no possibility of solution. Our response to a challenge determines our ability to overcome that challenge. There's another gentleman by the name of William Sloan Coffin, Jr. He was an American Christian clergyman and a longtime peace activist. He quoted, hope arouses as nothing else can arouse a passion for the possible. For such a time as this, is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? I'm reminded of this song. Where do I go when there's nobody there to listen? Who do I talk to when nobody wants to listen? Who do I lean on when there's no foundation a stable? I go to the rock. I know he's able. I go to the rock. Where do I go? Where do I go when the storms of life are threatening? Who do I turn to when those winds of sorrow blow? And is there a refuge in the time of great tribulation? Go to the rock. I know he's able. Go to the rock. The word of God assures us that there is a reason for hope and the manifestation of God's grace gives us that hope. For such a time as this, there is a bomb in Gilead. There are three essential principles of Operation Hope. God, his son Jesus, and his holy word. Our ultimate resource for our every need. Our theme scripture tonight, Psalm 18 and 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And that's why, in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, I am holding fast to sound doctrine. I am rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, and continuing instant in prayer. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence coming my help. My help coming from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Yes, in the beginning, God made heaven and earth. God is the source of all that exists, human beings and nature. God has sovereign rights over all creation by virtue of being its creator. He never stops being in charge of our lives. He never loses authority over circumstances that affects us. Therefore, 
Our trust is not in our own strength or in other people. It is not in our money. It is not in our government or our, our, our political affiliations. Psalms 146 warns us, do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot serve. It says when their spirit departs, they return to the ground. And on that very day, their plans come to nothing. The psalm says, blessed are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, their God. Is there anything too hard for God? God will either deliver us out of the circumstances or he will give us the strength to endure it. Remember and understand this. God's delay does not mean we are forsaken by him. Lamentation certifies this fact. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassion fails, never fails. They are new every morning. Great, oh God, is thy faithfulness. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Our heads are not in the sand. We understand the severity of this pandemic. But we are also persuaded that in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. There is protection and security in God's immovable strength. He is a place of safety, and he cannot be penetrated. He is a protective shield that guards and defends his people. He is a high tower that lifts us above dangers of life. Rock of ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. I've heard it said that a church on its knees is way more powerful than any army on its feet. Our attitude influences our actions. The right attitude will give us favorable results. Therefore, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting door. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Jesus Christ is God's son. Jesus is Emmanuel. God with us. Jesus is our source of hope because all power is given into his hand by the Father. We need Jesus. We need a personal relationship with him. Casting all your cares upon him because he cares for us. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory is of only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And behold, 
a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, King of kings, Lord of lords, the promised Messiah, the Savior of the world, the bread of life, priest and prophet. He is the mediator between man and God. He hates sin and loves righteousness. He gives help and grace in times of trouble. He is the good shepherd. This is our good news, our message of hope. Jesus Christ, the savior of the world. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Look at that to Jesus, our hope involves assurance in our hearts, a firm, confident trust in God's promises that we find in his word. God's word is eternally fixed in heaven. His word endured forever. It is dynamic, it is powerful, and it accomplishes great things. God said in Isaiah, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goeth forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. Everything that we know about God and his son Jesus, we find in the word. Through the comfort of the scriptures, we have hope. The word of God is our sword of the spirit whereby we war against the evils of life. Yeah. Yes, this is a war. Yeah. We're not in a skirmish yeah. or a minor conflict, yeah, right. but we're in a full-fledged war. Yeah. This is a spiritual warfare. Yeah. And spiritual warfare requires spiritual weapons. Yeah. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strong hope. When you are in a war, you fight. And you fight to win. God don't want no coward soldier. You don't enter a war unprepared. Warriors prepare in peacetime for times of battle. And that you may fight a good warfare, you need a strategy. You need a plan, a master plan, a method. Warriors need the right armor, protective covering from head to toe. They need to be equipped with adequate weapons. Soldiers need to be mentally and emotionally stable, physically fit as well. Good soldiers are disciplined, they are focused, they are confident, and they are alert. Ephesians 6 and 10 tells us how to come be combat ready in a spiritual warfare. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So what you gonna do? You're gonna stand your ground by putting on the belt of truth tight around your waist. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. For body armor, you're gonna put on God's righteousness. All unrighteousness is sin, so God's righteousness is to be free from sins. God's righteousness is holy living because God's people are called to holy living. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace is God news, the good news of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. He said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. At all times, carry the faith of the shield of faith. For with it, you will be able to fight and to, to, to put out all of the fiery darts of the enemy because the just shall live by his faith. Now Satan is a master strategist also with demons under his authority who are evil, malicious, and organized with different levels of rank to oppose God's people. So our firm conviction that Jesus Christ is our protection against everything that the devil throws at us. Jesus Christ intercepts our, all of the enemy's attacks. So you got to take the habit of salvation because salvation is our assurance of future hope. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness, that denying ungodliness and worldly lust we should live what? Soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So we thank God. We thank God for Operation Hope. We thank God because we know that one day Jesus is coming back. He's coming back for his people. For you and I, if we live right, heaven belongs to us. He had went away and he went away to prepare a place for us that where he is, we may be also. So even though in the midst of this pandemic, all the things that's going on, all the trouble that's troubling in us, all the deaths, all the whatever, we have a savior. We have a Lord. We have a God on our side. We got the Holy Ghost power that gives us strength and give us power to fight all the darts of the enemy. God is a good God. He's worthy to be praised. He's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You heard the testimony of Sister Jackie. God is still delivering. God is delivering. God is still healing because he's a healing. That's hope. Praise God. So you can just hope, hope thou in the Lord. Peace, he said. I leave with you. Peace, he said. I give unto you. He said, in this world, you may have tribulations. He said, but that's all right. I overcome the world. He's already overcoming. He's already won. He's the battle's already here. We don't have to wait till the battle's over. We can shout now. We can shout now because we are victorious. We are victorious people. We are God's people. God loves us. Praise God. Praise to his holy name. I thank God for his love. I thank God for his hope, because I do have hope. 
and you got hope too. If you got Jesus, you have hope. He's coming back, saints. Without a spot or wrinkle, he wants to come back and get his church. So you just got to be ready. Be ready when he comes. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. Praise God. tonight amen and i'm speaking to those that are out there who are viewing us by way of zoom amen youtube facebook whatever form of communication you're watching us on tonight we come on tonight to offer you jesus we wouldn't end this service without giving you that opportunity to come to christ on tonight because we know there is hope in christ jesus and i'm gonna tell you how easy it is to be saved it's not hard it's just like your ABCs. When you were young and your mother taught you your ABCs, it said, A, acknowledge that you are a sinner. Amen. It said, uh, Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Then that's the letter B. B say, believe. Believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Amen. In Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Then the letter C say, confess. Confess that Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior. Romans 10, 9, and 10. Amen. If we believe and confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, it said we shall be saved. By confession with your mouth. That's all it takes. Your ABC. Acknowledge. Believe and confess. Now, I want you to, you in the, out there, we're going to pray the prayer of salvation. Lord Jesus, forgive me for all the wrong I ever done. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I believe you died and you rose again for me. Come into my heart. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for the free gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name, now you say because you done confessed it. And if you did it sincerely in your heart, the Lord will accept that uh, confession and receive you as one of his on tonight. So I encourage you to start reading your Bible. If you don't read it, start reading it. Find somebody to tell that you just got saved. And then pray and ask God to give you a church to go to where you can become a follower of Christ. And that's all it takes, just knowing your ABCs on tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm asking everyone to stand. We're getting ready to go home and see you all back here tomorrow night. Amen. They tell me, everybody here, I expect to see you again on tomorrow night. God bless you. Till we meet, till we meet again, God be with you till we meet. This we ask in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much for tuning in to our Women's Night. I know it has been a spiritual, uplifting experience for you. Join us tomorrow at 12 noon for our capping and our ordination ceremony. And then that's not the end. Join us on Thursday where our prelate, Bishop Otis 
Augustus Dean Sr. will be our speaker. And as women of God, we do follow the rules. We want to practice social distancing and we are wearing our masks because in order to be true leaders, we have to follow. So again, thank you and be safe.